How are we supposed to address that from a spiritual perspective? That's one thing I think we should get into very heavily. Ty Tribbett, what do you think we can do, first of all, from a spiritual perspective, to get a real good eye, a good look at what is going on? I, I certainly do not have all the answers or any of the answers. I think we're all a little bewildered in this season, like what is going on and, and what can we do? Sometimes, quite frankly, you know, I just drop my shoulders like there's nothing we can do. You, you know, we can, we can express our emotions, we can be vocal about it, we can communicate. And I think to ease some of the tension, uh, black people would love for white people to be more vocal when there is injustices uh, like this. Uh, to ease the, the, the tension for us. Uh, I don't think that will, I, I don't know if it'll bring, you know, uh, uh, the change that we're looking for, uh, but it will definitely ease some of the tension so that we can dwell together in a little bit more harmony. H however, uh, this is more, this is a human issue. This is a human race issue. How can we dwell together in this earth with harmony and peace? That is the agenda of God. Uh, when the angels announced to the shepherds that Christ was born, they screamed the agenda of God. They said, glory to God in the highest. Give God the glory. But on earth, here's my agenda, peace and goodwill towards men. Live peaceably and treat each other right. God is like, I can't come down there personally and treat all of you all right, but I could put my spirit in all of you all and in hopes that you would treat each other right. And I think it's amazing that we hear the agenda screamed from heaven, like give glory to God in the highest, but on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Uh, so that, that to me is what we should align our emotions with, align our perspective with, and it's a human issue, yes, that's the fruit. Uh, to me, the racism, the prejudice, the hatred, these are a lot of the fruits. The root to me is that humans are in real trouble outside of God, outside of the will of God, outside of the, the, the structure and the order of biblical standards. We are in real trouble as we continue to live unrepented. And I know this is, might not, that's why I was quite reluctant Reluct, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. Thank you, thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> to be on the show, I'm like, uh, I don't know if people are gonna like what I'm gonna say, or I don't know if, if it's the time to deal with the roots, because a lot of people are focused on the fruits right now, and I don't wanna seem insensitive. However, the real problem is we are not surrendered to the will of God as humans, uh, and, and that's the real issue. I wanna speak truth to power. I wanna have conversation with the governor and you know, people responsible for our legislate and all of those things. Uh, uh, but a, a, a nation unsurrendered, we're gonna, it's, gonna be other, it's gonna be other issues like this. I mean, I was talking to uh, uh, Reverend Davis in the back and I said, you know what? At the end of all of this, Christ is gonna literally battle Satan in the huge war. It's not gonna be a fight between them two one-on-one. -on -one. It's gonna be a war, meaning Christ is gonna have his people who are gonna be us. Satan is gonna have his people. It's gonna be like that cop or other evil and wicked people. In other words, we're gonna to continue to see night and day, night and day, night and light. We're gonna to continue to see darkness and we're gonna to continue to see light. Uh, 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 all the days of our lives, I don't, I'm not trying to uh, uh, sound hopeless or anything like that, but our responsibility spiritually, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, don't riot, humble themselves, don't get so frustrated that you respond, you know, in your frustration, humble yourselves first, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, we don't want to do that. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, man, am I supposed to be on the show tonight? Because I don't want to be insensitive, you know, to the, to the confusion and the frustration and the heinous crime, which we all witness with our very own eyes. However, we have already documented what our response should be. Whether we enjoy that response or not, that's what we really have to dig with in, deep within ourselves and say, Lord, you have to help me respond your way. Jesus himself said, not my will, 
not what I want, not how I want to respond, but thy will be done. If the people of God humble themselves and take the perspective of Christ, we'll begin to see more peace and light emerge out of this darkness and confusion and violence and prejudice, and the list goes on and on and on. That's, that's my take for now. Clifton, can I, can I just word. respond to that? I, I, you know, I, uh, because Absolutely. when you talk about systems and structures, uh, when you talk about systems and structures, you know, um, I understand the hermeneutic that Ty Trivet is coming from, that we have to change the individual's relationship with God because essentially our woundedness and brokenness, our dysfunctionality, our disorder, that is a result of the condition of sin that we're born into that needs to be transformed by the power of God, speaks to the individual and the individual experience. But there was a time in American society <clears throat> where amongst a large evangelical body uh, uh, of white Christians, there was a hermeneutic of segregation that was part of their, their theological system. So they believed that, yeah, there should be a separation of races. One of the things that I love uh, very dearly about Dr. Billy Graham, and this is why I respect him and honor him so much, <laughs> is because during a time in 1958 when Brown versus the Board of Education was active. The Civil Rights Movement was active. Dr. Graham did something. He took a major step. He was having a crusade right here in New York City, and he was wondering why the audience was, was all white. And he called a friend of his, a bishop, and he asked him about, you know, the situation. And the bishop said, well, look at your, look at your stage, look at your staff, look at your choir, look at your musicians. What do you expect? And he said, what should I do? He said, you need to change that. Dr. Graham had the courage to call Dr. Martin Luther King, who was considered an activist and radical and by some a communist. He called him to the meeting and asked him to get up on the stage and bring words of greeting. That was radical for Dr. Graham to do something like that. And he introducing uh, uh, Dr. King, he said, he said, this is a man who is on the edge of change, cultural change that's necessary in our society. It's not until the voices of, of, of notoriety and, 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 and respect in our nation begin to use their platforms like that to make a difference. And even though uh, uh, Dr. Graham was brought up in that hermeneutic of segregation and believed in it, he had a change of understanding and evolved. And it's time for us to evolve and understand that this great nation that we love is based upon words that were not even intended to, to relate to black and brown people. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. When Jefferson penned that overnight in Philadelphia, he wasn't thinking about black people, brown people, or Indian people, or Latinos. He was thinking about the British who were mistreating them, the colonies, and he was asserting that they had the same rights and dignity. But isn't it wonderful how God used that very statement that he was applying to, in one way, to allow us 100, 200, 300 years later to hold this nation accountable to those values that make America great. That's why I love this country, and we've got to use the platforms that we have to make a difference.